So it would probably be a really good idea to go after Sam right now, but we're back in the village and we have all the proper equipment to get everything that we missed, so I think we should do that first. I want for nothing now. As a priestess of the Sun Queen, I stand above all others in her court. I'm being instructed in languages, etiquette, history, warfare, all the skills needed to rule. And the queen has been like a mother to me, warm, attentive, loving. But it all feels false, like some kind of performance. When I talk to the other priestesses, I sense disquiet. Some of them feel as I do, perhaps all of them, but why? What is it that we all fear? And since we have all this time of me running around an empty village looking for collectibles, I think it would be a pretty good time to talk about where we are, Yamatai. Since, you know, that's the basis of the whole plot from the start, really. Now, Yamatai was an actual place in ancient Japan, and although people debate all the time about, you know, where it could be now, it did exist, and it was mentioned in a lot of historical texts. Although the first mention is not actually from a Japanese text, but from a Chinese text called the Records of Three Kingdoms, which was written in about 297 AD. Though, if you sort of look for descriptions of Yamatai, you can sort of see it show up about 200 years before that. Speaking of showing up, I think we found where that plane landed. Yeah, that didn't end so well for anybody. Baby, I don't even know how to begin this, so I'm just gonna come right out with it. Alicia is yours. Maybe you've known it all along, but since I signed back on board the Endurance, I just can't keep the truth from you any longer. You've got to understand, I never meant to cut you out of her life, but I know you, Roth. I know how you live and what you want. Staying in one place and raising a kid is not on your agenda. Maybe I screwed up. Maybe I should have let you make a choice. But I made it for you, for what I thought was best. After the expedition, when the time is right, let's talk about the future. Take some time to think about what you want. Okay? So, in the Records of Three Kingdoms, Queen Himiko is not mentioned by name, though it does mention Yamatai by name. And in many of the ancient Chinese texts, she is often called a priest queen or a shaman because it was believed that she regularly practiced witchcraft or magic or future seeing, that sort of thing. And even though, you know, there are a couple of texts mentioning her, she unfortunately died before all of these were written, at least by, I think, 40 or 50 years. So there isn't too much detail about her or Yamatai. And Himiko is actually a sort of anomaly in ancient Japanese culture because most of the rulers of that time and since then have all been men. Though it's recorded that the people of Yamatai were getting sick and tired of fighting all the time and wanted a time of peace and thought that a woman ruler would do that. So they elected her, if you can put it that way, as queen of their country and she, well, she ended up making it pretty peaceful. She would often send emissaries to China on goodwill missions or receive ambassadors from China and that worked out well enough that it sort of ushered in a peaceful era between China and at least Yamatai. So when she was crowned queen in the hopes of bringing peace to Yamatai rather than endless war, I'd say it worked out pretty well. Oh wait, hold up, I gotta get this. Hmm, he took a few more shots than I wanted. But it's worth the experience and the little bit of salvage we get. There's a perk I'll get later on that increases the salvage we get from animals like that. American soldiers would never have left these behind. I don't think any of them made it out of here alive. 
So, I think now would be a good time to start talking about Himiko, since, you know, she's pretty important to the story. It's the entire reason we're on this island in the first place. Now, in this game, we've only gotten two accounts of what she was like, and both of them don't really come from the greatest of sources. One being a Chinese ambassador who left the island feeling more uncomfortable about Himiko's power, and a young girl feeling pretty uncomfortable about Himiko's power. And though we can't really verify people's feelings from these ancient texts, there are a lot of things that we can verify. One of which being that the girl who was chosen to be her attendant, well, that wasn't uncommon apparently in Yamatai, as Himiko had about a thousand attendants, all of whom were young girls. The only man who served her was more of a liaison between any ambassador that came to visit and her. So it seems like it was more of a holdover role from King's past or however that worked in ancient Japan. The kind of common thread between both this game and the ancient texts is that she's referred to as a shaman or a priest queen because she was known to see the future or be able to practice witchcraft, which is pretty easy to debunk since it's never been true. It's burdock, a root traditionally used in Campo to fight inflammation. And I'm not saying that she didn't practice witchcraft, but I'm pretty sure she couldn't see the future as many people seem to describe her doing. Himiko is still more of a mystery, and even though the Chinese ambassador in this game describes her as such, it's not really the case in actual historical texts, where the Wei Kingdom would set her ambassadors, and they regarded her pretty highly. There was no real uneasiness that any of them had, so I guess that was more of just a plot thing for this game. Probably the biggest mystery of uh, Yamatai is not so much who Himiko was, but where Yamatai was located, as they still haven't ever found a concrete location. As far as I know, they've been debating it for quite a long time, and no one's really come to a good consensus, although there are some good and other bad theories out there about where Yamatai would have been. There's one that believes it was in Okinawa, which has been pretty much debunked by everybody because that's stupid. And there's another that believes that it could have existed on either the mainland Japan or its southern island of Kyushu. Both of which have pretty good evidence behind them, though nothing concrete. There was actually a discovery in 2009 in the Nara prefecture of the main island of Honshu, where they found large stilt houses that could have been a remnant of Yamatai, but without any concrete proof, it's probably just going to remain a mystery forever. The one thing that this game does take a lot of liberty with is where they think Yamatai is. Because right now, we're not... Well, we're not sort of technically in Japan. We're on some island that may belong to Japan, out in the Dragon's Triangle, and that was mentioned way back in the beginning of this game. Now the Dragon's Triangle is also real, it's more commonly referred to as the Devil's Sea or the Pacific Bermuda Triangle, because, like the Atlantic Bermuda Triangle, there are a ton of ships, airplanes, that have just gone missing mysteriously, and no one's ever been able to tell where they've gone. There have also been a lot of cases of strange storms, so, you know, it fits the narrative of this story pretty well. The Dragon's Triangle is located just south of Tokyo, so it's not like we're sitting in the middle of the Pacific wondering where this Japanese kingdom was. And, you know, it works for what it is. I mean, all in all, the story behind Yamatai is an interesting one, although there isn't much to go on. In a way, Yamatai feels less like a Tomb Raider legend to be going after, and more like which one hasn't been covered by the Uncharted series, as this game goes to some great lengths to emulate the Uncharted series. 
The inherent mystery as to where it's located or who Queen Himiko was doesn't really hold as, you know, the other mysteries that have been covered by other games such as El Dorado or Shambhala, you know, great mysteries that need to be solved because, hey, there might be a treasure at the end. This one, it seems more of like a research expedition, which it kind of was. And it's a good foundation, but in this game, the legend often takes a backseat to the character actions, and I think that Crystal Dynamics knew that, and only used Yamatai and Himiko as a framework, rather than every piece of the puzzle. Now we can go back to another section of the mountain village, because there was a shotgun rubble area, whatever, that I couldn't get past to get one more thing. But Yamatai, you know, it's sort of a, almost like a bland mystery, there's not much to it, but it works for the game, it's not a detriment. My queen, as I stand in your light, I swear at this oath of allegiance to you. As your first storm guard and general of your armies, I will serve you unconditionally and protect the lands of Yamatai and all your people. I will stand at your side for the remainder of my days, relinquishing my post only at your command. If I should fail in my duties, my life is forfeit. My heart beats at your command. My breath is drawn at your pleasure. From this moment onwards, I answer only to you. And with that document, we're... Well, we're done with the mountain village, so we can finally move on with the story. We just kind of have to make our way back down to a campfire so we can get over to that house that we were in. Thankfully, though, we have plenty of zip lines to do that. So as we cross this little makeshift rope bridge thing, that brings our time in the mountain village to an end. No more coming back to collect anything here. So now it's time to... oh, what were we doing? Oh yeah, we were like rescuing people or something, I don't know, something stupid, right? So I guess next time we'll do that. <laughs>